Uh, welcome everybody to the first go-to session of the month. This is the first of four sessions that we're going to have this month. Um, remember too that there's always an associated quiz with these sessions that are, it's pretty simple. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I hold a session and then you have until Thursday night at midnight to take the quiz. Um, it's contained in the activity description of the quiz, but just in case people are confused, the quiz questions are always contained in the session itself. Um, so if you if you went into the quiz and were sort of shocked or surprised, wondering, oh, there, there are no questions here, I, I don't see anything, um, that's on purpose. And it might seem odd or it might seem frustrating, but it's just, um, it's a way to sort of avoid a problem that used to occur, which is that um, some people would try to answer the quiz questions without watching the session and that would lead to poor grades and none of us want that. So this is really sort of designed to make sure that you do, you do well on these quizzes. Um, today's quiz questions, there are four of them. They're going to appear at the end of the session. Okay. And I'll try to sort of indicate when material is appearing that's going to be involved in a quiz question, so there are no surprises. Um, the quizzes aren't designed to trip you up or confuse you. They're really just mostly to make sure that you've either attended or watched the session and done so with care. Um, I explained that there's a chat session down below. I try to keep my eyes open. Um, mostly I'll be delivering information, but I will keep my eye open in the chat for um, people who have questions or want to make comments. OK, uh, but this first session is, is, is basically an overview. Plus, it's also a description of what we need to immediately start doing this week. <clears throat> uh, this class moves fast. And actually, the first two weeks are probably the busiest. The final two weeks slow down a little bit, and that's by design. Um, but yeah, the first two weeks are a little bit busy. So there are already some activities that will, uh, will force you to start uh, moving and writing and working on your projects right from the get-go. Uh, so we'll get into that in this session as well. Uh, first, let me start off. Oh, here's the items for today. So we'll, we'll talk about the course a bit, uh, describe what you need to start working on immediately this week. This month, you're all working on public service announcements. So we need to spend some time talking about what those are, you know, what they are, what they look like. Uh, and then I want to get into some more sort of big picture issues like the importance of audience, um, the importance of topic selection. And then we'll we'll leave some time at the end for a Q&A. Uh, just to confirm that everybody's hearing me okay, can someone just type real quickly in the chat, yes, like that, yeah, yes, you're hearing me. Okay, good. You guys are so silent. <laughs> Nobody was saying hello to one another in the chat, so uh, that kind of uh, shocked me. Okay, um, McGraw-Hill Connect, how many of you are signed up over at the textbook site? Okay. Good, good. Looks like a lot of the people here in the session are. Um, I'm going to get away from the PowerPoint for just a second and go to the actual FSO page. Um, if you go to... You know, it's in two locations, ebook registration or the McGraw-Hill uh, activity. But if you go into it, th and I, by the way, for the people here, it sounds like most of you already signed up for the site. But just in case our people are confused and watch the session later, um, there's a PDF down here. Um, and it's really simple. You just open the PDF, you scroll down to this link and just click on it. I've heard that there can be problems if you try to copy and paste this. Um, I don't know if that's still true. Uh, but if you click on it, it will take you directly to the McGraw-Hill page where you can finish the registration process. For that registration process, you will need, in addition to basic setup, you'll need a code that should have been emailed to your full sale email address. You'll need that specific textbook code to finish registration. If you didn't get that um, that registration code, you need to contact FSO support. Okay, um, it's in some of the uh, basic documents for you to read through in this course. Um, all of you should be able to to find. Uh, should know how to contact FSO support already, but this is one of the most common questions they respond to. So it's really easy to get the registration code sent to you if you didn't get it. Uh, but it's important that everybody gets signed up uh, because once you're signed up for McGraw-Hill and I already have the page open, you'll see something that looks like this. So there are readings you have to do, okay, and they're organized by week. They're pretty easy readings. Uh, some of you may already start it, but if I go into this first one, I mean, you open up week one and you see all this and you think, wow, so much reading. But then you click on one of the readings, like what is good writing? And you'll see that it's actually pretty short. For some reason, my page isn't loading. <laughs> but uh, what is good writing is like a single short paragraph. Um, so most of the readings are quite short. I don't know why it's not appearing on my screen. That might be why my computer is freezing. Well, that's not good. 
this has been happening ever since I uploaded to Yosemite. Just constant freezing in Safari. Let me see if clicking off of it helps. Okay. Uh, I'm going to risk going back in. Uh, but while I do that, let me keep talking. Um, if we look at the main FSO page, okay, so I'm going to go back to the main activities page. You have a bunch of like uh, basic documents to read through, like welcome to English composition. The, the important thing I want to note here are two things. First of all, if you need to send me a message, um, do so using this envelope icon at the top here. Um, when you use this function, that means that my little envelope lights up and then I see there's a message waiting for me. If you just leave a comment under an activity, like let's say you completed the ebook registration and you had a comment that you wanted or a question you wanted to ask me, I'll see it, but it's, it's, it's harder to see because it gets sent to this little bell looking symbol, which is notifications. And I get notifications for anything you guys do. So, okay, if you sneeze, I get a notification. If you... Uh, <laughs> Eat too much for dinner, have heartburn, I get a notification. Um, that's my joke of saying that, really, if you just, uh, you know how you have to click complete on, on a, even these ungraded activities to move past them? Um, I get a notification when you do so. So if you leave me a comment under one of these activities, it sort of gets buried within all of the notifications. And yeah, I try to keep my eyes open and see those comments. But if there's anything that you want me to absolutely answer and answer quickly, use the envelope icon, okay? Because those I know have to be responded to immediately. Okay, let's see if McGraw-Hill is going to act a little bit better now. The other th important thing about McGraw-Hill is, yeah, you have these readings to do. And by the way, this is also a popular question that gets asked. I have no way to keep track of your readings. So it's, it's mostly just based on trust. And listen, I'll be honest, maybe some of the readings are more are less essential than others. Maybe some of them you can get away not reading, but there's important stuff that comes later, like how to incorporate research. So if you've been confused about how people naturally um, include quotations within their own writing, like you have readings that cover this. Okay, for example, how can I integrate source material into my writing? Um, we'll get into APA starting next week, and I'll help you a lot with APA, but I can't possibly cover every issue uh, that applies to APA formatting. So you have lots of readings that cover APA. Um, so there are some useful readings here that you definitely should take advantage of. The other important thing is there are these uh, Learn Smart Achieve programs. Actually, I think they've been re re retitled uh, Adapt a Writing Study. Uh, but anyway, there are these weekly modules that you need to complete by each Saturday. So the first one, week one, is due this Saturday. Um, the others are due on the following Saturdays. Um, there's one that lasts all month long. It's mostly focused on grammar, sentence structure, all of that. Um, I'm not going to click on this because I don't want my, my machine to freeze up again. But if you click on the link, it basically sets up the module for you. It walks you through the steps so that you can go ahead and complete the modules. And the great thing here is that you just have to complete them. Okay? If you get to 100%, you get all those points. So you can see for the week one module, it's worth, what, 3%? Week two is worth 4%. Week three, three percent. So uh, I, I'm terrible at doing math in my head. Five, nine, thirteen. There's about sixteen percent of your grade uh, that's basically given to you. Okay, if you'll just complete those four modules. Um, and the good thing is, and I swear I'm not shilling for McGraw Hill. I'm not. I don't own stock in the company. But the feedback on these modules has been pretty good. Like students actually find them valuable. Um, that kind of surprised me because sometimes there's a risk that that stuff can seem like busy work. Um, and I'm happy to report that most students, maybe it's because these modules have a game-like quality. Uh, you know, you, you, you answer questions, and if, you're, if they're correct, you move on. If they're incorrect, you sort of have to answer more. Uh, but anyway, take advantage of those easy points. And there are actually a bunch of easy points on the schedule here, like this professional emails quiz. Okay, that's a breeze. It's pretty rare that I see anybody get lower than an A or a B on this quiz. Um, professionalism. Okay, there's 10% for professionalism, which basically means if you hand in all your work on time, if you follow professional communication standards, meaning that you don't just write me a message that says, hey, what's up? I got a question. Um, that you actually are a bit more formal than that. Uh, but basically, if you're a professional throughout the whole month, you get all that 10%. So there's about 40%, maybe a little bit more, that's basically just given to you. And if you take advantage of those points, I'm not. it's pretty impossible not to pass. Um, the only way not to pass is if you truly just don't do the rest of the work or 
or, or do it very, very, very badly. Uh, so set yourself up in a good position um, and take advantage of those easy, easy points. Um, someone has her hand up. Aaron, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Unless, <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you click the little hand icon, that means you're raising your hand, which means I can unmute you and you can speak out loud. Aaron took his down, so maybe he's asking his question in the chat said. Aaron says, can we go ahead and do week one and three along with the all-month portion? Yes, yes, absolutely. I have it set up so that, um, as you can see, all the dates are already open for May 4th. So that means if you get done with week one and you want to jump ahead to week two, you can get moving on it ahead of time. And lots of students do that. I shouldn't say lots. There's maybe a handful of students out of 25 who do that. But yeah, I've had students do this whole thing like in just one long weekend. Okay, all four parts. So if you want to get a head start and complete them, great. Uh, let's see, the other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, just a reminder of the late work policy in this class. Basically, there is no late work allowed. So when assignments are due, they're due. Um, I'm a bit more flexible in the sense that if you can get in touch with me before the due date, not meaning five minutes before it's due because you're panicking that it's almost midnight, but if there really is some issue, you've just been called into work uh, double shift or you're feeling under the weather or I don't know, some other reason and you let me know, then I can be flexible. But once the date has passed, I really don't have um, any options, okay, because it's department policy and I, even I can't bend that. Um, so there is a zero late work policy in this class. I know other classes like DGL, sometimes there's a penalty for each day that it's late. In this class, there isn't. Um, things are due when they're due. Okay, moving on, moving on. Um, this week's assignments. Actually, let me back up and uh, to, to come about this like uh, through the back door. We'll, we'll come back to this week's assignments in just a second. And let's start talking about, because in order to understand this week's assignments, we have to understand what we're, we're, what we're working on for the entire month. And what we're working on in this class are PSAs, public service announcements. Um, who knows what a public service announcement is or who can give me an example of one in the chat? because it's pretty important that we understand what it is. PSAs are deceptively simple. Once it clicks in your head what they are, then I think you can hit the ground running. But there is sometimes, at the very beginning, a little bit of confusion about what public service announcements are, which is normal, but that's why we're gonna, we're gonna talk about them now. So who can give me an example of what a PSA is? Like uh, ones you might've seen on television, or heard on the radio, seen in a print ad. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his first and last name. And Mr. Singh, I think you had a, I think you said in one of the discussion boards, did you have a shortened form of your first name that you like to go by? Hesh, maybe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Hesh. Hesh says, uh, uh, warnings coming across the TV for bad weather. Y yeah, I mean, kind of, but not so much for this class. That's more, I don't know. I mean, it is, a, it is an announcement, and it is an announcement meant for the public. Um, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a little bit different, though. Uh, from what we're working on. Aaron says, informing others of situations that are going on around you. Yeah, but that feels a little bit general. Who can give uh, specifics? Michael says, it seems more like a brief message to raise awareness. Okay, that's a big part of it, right? We're raising awareness about an issue. So who can give me examples of issues that you've seen on television or in magazines or on the radio? Because they're all around us. And maybe if we can look at, uh, we can name some examples so Desiree says drug addiction. Okay, good. When I was a kid, there was a famous one um, of just someone cracking an egg into a frying pan, right? And originally it says, this is your brain, and it shows the whole egg. And then they crack the egg into the frying pan, and then the, the voice says, and this is your brain on drugs, right? <clears throat> uh, Hesh says police abuse. Okay, that could definitely be a PSA topic. I'm not sure if I've seen any, but yeah, absolutely. Um, Eric says racism, social issues, yeah. Um, individuals disgracing the American flag. These are all great issues. I'm just, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a PSA that targets these things. Maybe they have. Think of the really basic stuff. Like uh, here in Florida, we have lots of anti-smoking PSAs on television. Okay, really, really like frightening smoking ads. Like people who have had their part of their throat removed and have to talk through one of those uh, little things that they have to hold up to their throat. Um, and, the, and the point of the PSA is to scare the living daylights out of you, right? To quit smoking. Um, Aaron, texting and driving. Okay, that's a good one, right? Texting and driving. Uh, Tava says, do they have to have a shock factor? No, they do not. And um, 
and maybe as we talk more, we'll give examples of, of PSAs that don't have to. Um, I think the core of it, as someone mentioned it earlier, is that think of the PSA as basically having three parts. You're identifying an issue that needs awareness, okay? So you're seeking to educate that audience about the issue, and you're encouraging the audience to do something about it, okay? So it can be Smokey the Bear about only you can stop, only you can prevent forest fires. Um, it could be those anti-smoking campaigns. Um, I, I think I've seen ones on bullying, right? Okay, so these are sort of PSA issues. Uh, but here's a twist for this class. You won't be doing it on smoking or what have some other people said here, lack of water in Africa, California water shortage, uh, the American flag, right? You won't be writing about any of these issues. The twist for this class is your PSA has to be industry related. So you need to find an issue or a topic um, that's related to your industry. So if, if people could real quickly, why don't you go ahead and mention the chat what you're here to study. Some of you are in music. Uh, some of you, okay, good computer animation, game design, music business, mobile app. Okay, good, good. A good range of stuff here. So the music business, obviously you can focus on any issue. I do have one sort of forbidden topic, which I'll get to later <laughs> for music people, actually for all people. Um, uh, I'll actually spill the beans and say, yeah, piracy is off limits because it's, it's sort of too obvious and, and too easy. And, um, and part of, you know, a lot of you, some of you may know quite a bit about your industries already, especially if you've done some work in your field, but others of you are here to learn about your industry at Full Sail. Um, so part of this class is also designed to help you learn about your industry. Um, okay, so it's cool because you get to write about a topic that hopefully interests you. And by doing so, hopefully you can learn more about your industry. And I don't know, piracy is just, it's too familiar. Um, it tells me that, not to sound harsh, uh, but it tells me that a student maybe spent all five seconds thinking of industry issues and just latched on to piracy. Um, other than that, I don't really have very many forbidden topics. So the game design people, you know, anything that relates to the gaming industry. Um, the mobile app person, and if you can th think of something app specific, that's great. There are plenty of app specific topics out there, but if you need to broaden it uh, more generally to issues of uh, computer programming, that's fine as well. Um, other qualifications, yeah, it has to be related to your industry. It must be narrow in scope, okay? Um, it has to have a clear persuasive angle. And finally, it, it must include a call for action or support. This is just a fancy way of saying you're asking an audience to do something. Um, those anti-smoking PSAs, right? They're not just giving random facts and figures about smoking. They have a message, right? Quit smoking now. Or the PSAs that target teens, don't even start the habit, okay? There's a, there's a very, very direct message that's trying to reach an audience. Um, so that's what your PSAs need to do for this class. Uh, Desiree says, are we allowed to use video slideshows? Uh, okay, good question. There are basically two parts to this this month's work. First, you're going to explore your topic in essay format, and that's what we're working on uh, for you to hand in by the end of week two. Um, after that, yes, you're going to create an actual PSA in the form of a short film, a short audio piece, a song or jingle, um, a short comic, okay? I don't want to, I'm not going to get too much into that today because that's putting the horse before the carriage. But in week three, we'll talk about that in depth. Right now, we're just focusing on mostly on you'll, you'll need to choose a topic um, that you can explore in an essay. Uh, Paige says she's confused. Does each week have a PSA? No, no, no. We're going to find your single PSA topic that you're going to work on for the entire month. Okay, I already said piracy isn't allowed because it's too easy of a topic, but let's say I allowed piracy, which I don't. <laughs> piracy would be the topic you'll work on all month long. Okay, for today, for tomorrow, for the entire month. Okay, um, this week you'll choose your topic. Um, you'll, you'll actually write an introduction paragraph uh, for what will become your essay in week two. Um, next week we'll get into discussions of research and you'll actually write the essay. Um, and then week three and four will be devoted to kind of preparing ourselves for the actual creation of a multimedia PSA. Uh, Hesh says week three doing the PSA is going to be the same topic that we use in week one. Yes, exactly. Um, so it's pretty important that we get a good topic right from the get-go. And the, the good news is I'm going to help you with that. Like uh, one of your quiz questions will be related to this. So when you hand in your quiz Thursday night by midnight, 
um, I will respond to it with very specific feedbacks because I don't expect people to automatically find a great topic right off the bat. <clears throat> um, so I, I am here to help you uh, find your topic. Okay. Um, and he, 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 this is just what I went over. Okay, so week one, you're going to pitch a topic, you're going to write an introduction paragraph, and also come up with your thesis. Thesis, I know that word frightens people, but for this assignment, it's very easy. The thesis is basically your PSA message, okay? Your specific message about what you want a specific audience to do about this issue. Um, and by the way, I have a long, not long, but I have an example that I created, which I'm going to show a bit later. Um, so I do give you lots of help and lots of models um, so that you won't feel lost. Week two, you're going to narrow down the topic if it still needs narrowing down, and you're going to write that essay. Week three, you're going to participate in peer review where you'll look at each other's essays and give them feedback. And then week four, you're going to produce an actual multimedia public service announcement uh, because this is full sale and we do things differently here. Um, and plus, we have so many creative people. So um, instead of just, you know, rewriting the essay or writing a new essay, um, you'll actually transform the essay into a multimedia piece. Um, we're going to return to PSAs in a moment, but first I want to make some uh, comments about audience and the importance of audience. Um, and th the reason I like this PSA project is because it teaches fundamentals of good writing, but does so in a unique way. Um, so you're not just writing the same dull essay. You're not just writing the same dull research paper. You're actually writing something about your industry that hopefully you're interested in. Um, but also um, the core issues of this class, right? You're going to write a persuasive PSA. It's going to have a message, which in other classes would be called your thesis. Uh, but also, it, the PSA requires you to be hyper aware of audience, which is an important part of writing. Because if you're not aware of your audience, um, it's difficult to know if your message is successful or not. So let's talk a little bit about audience. Uh, first of all, and this might be involved with your first quiz question, um, but this is there's this triangle. It's, it's referred to as a rhetorical triangle. Um, which describes what is often called the rhetorical situation. Um, and if you look at this triangle, here's what I want you to understand, because it's, it's sort of a complicated, esoteric topic, but I'm going to make it much, much simpler. If we look at the triangle, you'll see that there are three parts, writer, reader, and text. These are sort of the three core elements that take place within any form of communication, whether it's communication that occurs on the page, whether it's communication that occurs in real time, such as me speaking to all of you right now, Okay, so we could replace the word writer with speaker, for instance. We could replace the reader with audience. Okay, but these three components are always um, required. Um, the important thing that I want you to remember is that with this rhetorical triangle, if you change any one of these elements, it affects the other two. So let me begin with a really, really basic example. Let's say you have to give a set of instructions to someone. Okay, maybe it's how to bake a cake. Maybe it's how to hook up a hook up a piece of technology. Um, it would make a big difference whether your audience was eight years old or 35 years old, right? If your audience is eight years old, meaning we're changing the audience, you would have to make different choices as a writer. And these would also show up as differences in the text. You might use simpler language. You might use comparisons or descriptions that would make more sense to an eight-year-old. Um, if we think about your PSA topic, the same thing sort of exists. Um, if you're writing about a gaming issue, right, an issue that affects the gaming industry, um, you would make different choices as a writer, and it would also affect your text, whether you're trying to send your message to gamers themselves versus, let's say, the people who actually make the games. Um, with the people who make the games, you could probably focus more on technical language, um, technical aspects that they would understand, whereas with gamers, you might not focus on that so much. So here's the gist of it. The rhetorical triangle contains these three essential elements, and if you change any one aspect, it affects the other two. Okay? Uh, so keep all that in mind for quiz question number one, which is right here. Oh, I'm wrong. They don't all appear at the end of today. There, there are other, there are other go-to sessions where I think I have it set up where the questions all appear at the end. Today's appear throughout. So here's quiz question number one, and I'll give you a chance to either write this down or take a quick screenshot. Um, what is the rhetorical situation? In other words, explain the triangle, its parts, and its function. In other words, what I just went over. <clears throat> okay, are we ready? Can we move on? 
Uh, yeah, Paige, I control the triangle again at the at the end. Um, and it's important to consider audience because different audiences have different needs. And I swear, if this if this if this information seems like uh, really sort of esoteric, which is just a fancy way of saying knowledge is such it's so highly specific that it it, it couldn't possibly be relevant to you. you I, I'm telling you, as you work on your PSA, you'll 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 learn the importance of audience. Um, but the, uh, when we when we look at this word appeal, audience appeal, there are three basic ways that we can reach an audience. Um, they have fancy Greek words. Anybody want to show off? Maybe you've done some of the reading already. <laughs> Does anybody remember those fancy Greek words? Uh, if not, I'll show them in just a second. But there's always a student. Yeah, there we go. Paige knows it. <laughs> Ethos, logos, and pathos. Okay, good. There's always one student who, who already knows the material. Um, good. Awesome. Yeah, so let's go through those one at a time. And I don't care if you remember the fancy Greek words, okay? I just want you to remember um, what they mean. Although, to be honest, for a quiz question, you probably – you do need to remember the Greek words. But after today's session, <laughs> you don't need to remember the word. Just remember what it means. Um, so let's begin with pathos, right? The appeal to emotion. Um, this should seem common sense that one of the most powerful ways we can speak to someone or convince someone of something is to appeal to the heart. Um, think of those commercials that I always see on television with uh, Sarah McLaughlin. I don't know if people still remember who Sarah McLaughlin is. She was a big singer in the 1990s. Uh, and what is she doing it for? Is it the SPCA, right? It's, it's all these animals in cages, and they're like the most depressing things you have to watch on like a on – a, it always seems to be at the in, in the evening, like 11 o'clock at night. And then you switch to another channel for five minutes, and you, you go back thinking it must be over, and it's still going on, right? Uh, those those uh, commercials, they're not really commercials. Commercials sell products, but um, those PSAs are using pathos over time, right? The sad images, as, as, as Hesh says, the mu sad music, uh, the, the sad dogs, the sad cats, right? It breaks your heart. So there's pathos, okay? The appeal to motion. Uh, the complete opposite of the appeal to motion is logos, which is the appeal to logic or reason. Um, you probably, even though emotion is powerful, um, if you only sing that one note, you might not convince your audience as well as you could. Um, so appealing to someone's sense of logic or reason is equally powerful. Um, this means using statistics, facts, examples, right? So think of like uh, PSAs that, that, that show you startling figures or maybe they use a chart or a graph, okay? Um, those are appeals to logic. And the final one, ethos, is kind of the hardest to explain. In general, it means the appeal to authority. Um, it's the appeal to trust or credibility. And ethos is something that you establish as the writer overall. It could be uh, rooted in what sorts of evidence you use. For example, um, you know, if, if you're doing a PSA on forest fires, which wouldn't be appropriate for this class, but let's just use that as a general example. Like, who would be a more powerful representative to use as a spokesperson? Um, a ranger who has 25 years service working um, in campsites or Kim Kardashian, right? One has much more credibility or trust than the other. So ethos refers to this overall sense of authority, uh, credibility, trust that you establish as the writer. And it's established in lots of different ways. It's established in the examples you use or the facts that you cite or the moves that you make. It's also established in the writing itself, um, right? We, we'll, we tend to trust, put more credibility in something that's, uh, that's solidly written rather than something that's sort of hastily written. Um, so ethos is sort of this grand kind of overall term that we use to, to just refer to the, the, the credibility that you develop as a writer or a speaker. Okay, and I think the next slide is quiz question number two. Uh, what are the three types of persuasive appeals? Name them, define them, and give an example of each, okay? So basically what I've covered in the last three slides. What are those fancy Greek names? What do they mean? And can you give a quick example of each? Okay, are we good? Can we move on with the tour? 
Uh, Hesh says, do we have to type the quiz questions up? No, 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 no. You just have to give your answer. I mean, write in complete sentences, but yeah, you just have to give the answer. I have all the quiz questions so memorized after months and months of teaching them. <laughs> you don't have to remind me of what the question is. I already know what it is. Um, okay, I'm moving on. By the way, if you don't know how to take screenshots, you should probably learn. If you have a Mac, I believe it's Control-Command-3. Uh, and if you have a, a Windows machine, it's much easier. I think you just press the uh, print screen button. Or you can take a picture with your phone. That works, too. That works, too. Okay, so let's return to PSAs. My first piece of advice is start brainstorming PSA topics now. Okay, and I mean right now. <laughs> and listen, if you can't think of a topic off the off the top of your head, no problem. Uh, you guys are great with computers. Uh, start Googling. Okay, learn about your industry. Find issues that you can that you can focus on. If you want to sort of share what you're thinking about already in the chat, you can do so. Um, it's always awesome. Last month I had someone who didn't have a great topic in the chat originally, but later came up with a really great one. So I don't expect people to know everything right off the right off the top. Uh, but you need to find your topics now, um, like right now <laughs> or, or by Thursday at the latest, uh, because we need to have your topic pretty firmly in place so you can move on the other on the other parts. Um, some advice to help you with PSA topics. Um, yeah, if you know people working in the industry, you might want to pick their brains. Uh, Paige says, do we submit that in 1.4? What is 1.4? Is that the quiz? You'll have a quiz question later that asks you to pitch your topic. So um, you'll pitch your topic in this quiz. Um, you can read industry-related journals, magazines, and newspapers. Uh, Google, again, Google is your friend. Uh, so you can search for current debates, current controversies, current challenges. Okay. Um, and just in general, social issues, tech issues, health and safety issues, financial issues, etc., all tend to work well. So someone said earlier, does it have to be like a shocking topic? No, no, no. It can be pretty down to earth. It just has to be an issue that needs attention, needs awareness. Okay. Um, okay. Topics to avoid. Uh, I sort of have two broad, uh, two general categories of topics that you avoid. The first category is um, ones that are too broad or that are too rooted in personal opinion. Things like Hollywood is unoriginal or piracy of music must stop. Or I get this one a lot. The music industry is all about money. Or I get this one occasionally too. Music today is terrible compared to past generations. Um, I know it's only the second day of class, but I'm hoping that people can kind of see what I'm getting at with these topics. Uh, you should kind of tell that they're way too broad. Like how could you possibly cover in two to four pages that Hollywood is unoriginal? Um, or that the music industry is all about money? Um, but there's another concern, too, which is that they're very, very rooted in personal opinion. Like, music today is terrible. Okay, I disagree. <laughs> I, I would argue the opposite. Um, but, okay, let's say you think that I'm wrong. This is sort of the point I'm trying to get at. Personal opinion doesn't really work very well for a PSA. Uh, PSAs are about identifying a real, concrete issue that most people could sit down and say, yes, this is an issue. This needs to be addressed. Um, personal opinion is just that it's just you broadcasting your personal opinion and trying to convince others that your opinion is right. And Hey, I get it. I have lots of personal opinions too. Um, I have bands that I think are great and bands I think are terrible. I have movies that I think are awesome and movies that I think are awful. Uh, but I would never make that the subject of a PSA. Um, and all these, yeah, besides being very, very broad, um, they're also sort of wandering into personal opinion and, um, that's not what we're doing for the PSA. Uh, I hope I'm saying this right, but John says, could it relate to other countries? Yes. I mean, I'd have to hear your topic idea, but I've had, I've had students in the past who have written about specific entertainment issues that relate to, for example, China, or I had a student from Brazil who was writing about the problem of, uh, fan violence caused by alcohol consumption outside soccer stadiums, which in, you know, the rest of the world is called football. Uh, so yeah, it can be country specific if you're not from the United States. Um, Toby says, so we are using something that is already known and talked about. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, 
the the reason I say uh, piracy is, is on the forbidden list is just because it's so overdone and it's and it's so easy and student. If I didn't put it on my forbidden list, half my students would write about piracy. Right, the film students would write about piracy. The music students would write about piracy. The game people would write about piracy. So if it's talked about too much, then maybe it's a concern. But yes, it should be a real issue. That's that's you know that other people have talked about uh, because you'll have to do research starting in week two, and it's sort of difficult to do research on an issue that doesn't exist. Okay, um, that's another problem with all these. These are impossible to research. <laughs> like music is terrible. I mean, you might find some some odd quotes from uh, artists who, who who say such things, but it's really difficult to find sort of solid research to prove um, this issue. Uh, Tavis says copyright issues is that considered a, a part of piracy? Um, if you can tell me more, that it, it, I, I could I could comment on that further. Um, but certainly, if you can find some aspect of these that are narrower and less rooted in personal opinion, they can work. For example, I say piracy is forbidden, but I've had gaming students. And by the way, I don't know if this is true anymore because I'm now a console gamer. Okay. I got my PS3. I have my 3DS. Uh, I am no longer a PC gamer because I couldn't afford to buy a new computer every three years to play games. Uh, so I don't know if this is still true, but I, I, but you know, even just two or three years ago, PC gamers were complaining about the anti-piracy measures being too extreme. Right, you buy your copy of your game for you know forty, fifty dollars, and unless you have an internet connection, you can't play the game, even if it's just a single player experience. We're not talking about multiplayer. Um, you know, you want to boot up your uh, I don't know latest Assassin's Creed game and just go through the single player experience, and you can't do so unless you have an internet connection because that's the way that it verifies uh, that you actually have the the actual disc that you purchased um so you know people who take issue with that and think that it's too extreme or that the gaming industry needs to find different solutions like that's an okay topic to pursue because that's different than just uh piracy is bad uh don't do it okay that's what we're sort of trying to avoid here uh the other category to avoid um topics where there really is no problem or issue um, so sometimes I have students pitch ideas like this. Uh, film has made such great technological advances. Or graphic design is important and is all around us. Or show production is a fascinating field. Um, the issue here is that there, there's really no stance. There's no issue. Okay, the uh, Graphic design is important and it's all around us. Okay, I agree. Uh, but that's not a public service announcement. And that's why I said at the beginning of this session, PSAs are deceptively simple. So once you sort of make that switch in your mind and get it, then I think everything sort of falls into place. Once you remember that a PSA addresses an issue, educates an audience about that issue, and encourages an audience to do something about it, then you know you're heading down the path of a, of a public service announcement. Sometimes people hear the words public and announcement and just think, oh, I just have to share some piece of interesting information with an audience. Um, no, it has to have sort of a persuasive edge to it, okay? Um, so all these topics are sort of reading, leading to factual reports, not actual raising awareness about an issue that demands attention. Uh, Desiree says, would the topic of real world violence and its link to gaming be acceptable? Uh, I don't know. Is that, is that a current issue in the industry? Is there some sort of link that's been talked about a lot about gaming? I assume you mean that the, the gaming leads to violence? I, I think, you know, I'm not saying that Desiree is suggesting this exactly, but um, yeah, be careful because they're not sort of the argument topics that you would typically write about in, in another English class. So those classic debate topics like, uh, well, this, these aren't industry related, but, you know, legalization of drugs or abortion, or do video games really lead to violence? Again, those sort of seem like general argument topics rather than really zeroing in on an industry issue. And by the way, I'm going to make you guys sweat a little bit. I mean, I'm going to help you every step of the way, but I'm not going to give you your topics, okay? I want you to go out there, you know, use the power of the internet, um, read, speak to friends in the industry if you have some, and find out uh, you know, find a topic that will work for this assignment. I'll help you. I'll guide you, but I can't just give you your topic. But I will say gaming is easy. There are a gazillion topics related to gaming that you could concentrate on. 
uh, pages can a PSA be developing an iOS application? Okay, but what's the issue there? Um, again, like how is it not falling into this category here? Like uh, film has made such great technological advances. Right, it has to be an issue. So for example, let's say, I don't know, uh, a recent operating system was re released that's prone to security risk. And maybe people, some people know about it, but not enough people know about it. Like that would be an issue that you could, uh, that you could inform people about. Uh, wants is good or bad. I'm not sure what that question means, good or bad. Um, here is quiz question number three, and we can keep talking in the chat if we, if you want to propose topics or or get your head wrapped around things. Uh, but yeah, propose a topic for your essay. Uh, what is your chosen industry problem or issue, and why is it important to raise awareness about it? Okay, so this is quiz question number three, and this will give me a chance to respond to you. Um, I don't really grade this question that harshly. I mean, if you write piracy, I'll get angry because I already said 10 times in the session that that's the one topic that's forbidden. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. But otherwise, I don't really take off points if the, if the topic isn't per perfect because I realize we're still trying to uh, perfect the topic. And I can guarantee you, I'm good at this. I can get all of you onto a good topic uh, by next week. Uh, Juan says the issues can be good issues or bad issues. That's a good question. Um, I would say they could, they could be bad issues or neutral issues. I'm not sure a public service announcement would necessarily highlight a good issue because then I'm not sure. I mean, remember, an important part of this equation is that you're asking a specific audience to do something about the issue. Um, so if it's something that's good, I'm not sure what the audience can do about it. Uh, but I have seen neutral issues. And if it seems frustrating that I'm not giving examples, it's just because I know if I give too many examples, people are just going to run with my example instead of figuring things out for themselves. Um, Paige says, okay, so can I do security issues such as hackers hacking into different apps? Uh, yeah, on the surface of things, that sounds like a good issue. I, I'll need to know more about it. Um, hopefully, I mean, I assume that the issue is real, but yeah. Uh, if, and especially if it's something like I, I, I recently joined the smartphone generation just this past summer. I'm the last person in North America to, to get a smartphone. Uh, so, yeah, I have apps on my phone. So if it's something that people like me aren't aware of, um, yeah, that would be a good topic for a PSA. OK, so we're moving on. OK, let's get into what you need to do for this week. Um, like I said, the first two weeks move fast. So for week one, I'm asking you to do a lot of things. First, I'm asking you to find your topic. Second of all, you'll have to develop a thesis. Again, don't get too lost in the word thesis. I'm going to show just how easy the thesis is. And I'm asking you for the first discussion activity to write an actual introduction paragraph. OK, I'm asking you to write the opening paragraph of what could be your week two essay. I say could be because maybe you'll need to revise the introduction once you get feedback. But in theory, I want you already working on your first paragraph because the first paragraph does so much. Okay, and we're going to talk about what introduction paragraphs do. Uh, yes, Hesh, this is for uh, basically leading up to your essay, which is due the Sunday at the end of week two. Uh, so let's talk real quickly about some essay fundamentals. First of all, that fancy word thesis statement, okay? Um, a lot of you got this in high school, but in case you didn't, a thesis, a thesis acts like the roadmap to your paper. It typically appears at the end of the introduction, and it's usually a sentence or two that defines your paper and tells readers where your paper is going. Um, the good news is if you ever found thesis statements frustrating in the past, like when you when you took an English class in high school or maybe for another college level course, um, the thesis for this class is much simpler. You don't have to come up with some novel, unique interpretation of something, okay? Your thesis is quite literally your PSA message. So here's an example of a thesis. Although video game companies have made strides in presenting strong, non-sexualized images of women, these companies need to be pressured to do more. Gamers need to write to game publishers and gaming magazines and let their voices be heard. Notice, okay, we have two sentences here, uh, both of which make up the thesis. 
And notice what it's doing. It's doing three things. It's presenting the issue, right? Something about over-sexualized images of women in video games. It identifies the specific audience we're trying to reach, gamers, okay? And it has a message for that audience. Gamers need to write to publishers and magazines and let their voices be heard, okay? So that's what your thesis is. It's just a sentence or two that captures your topic, your audience, and your message. If you can do those three things, you're set. Uh, so next, let's talk about introductions, because the thesis is the final part of your introduction. So what comes before that? Um, here's the gist on introductions. Introductions basically do three things. They briefly define the issue or topic, okay? Briefly, because more development will occur in the actual body of your essay. Uh, but introductions do give a glimpse at your topic. Um, we just covered this. Introductions end with a clear thesis, which for you will be your PSA message. And introductions ideally should find an engaging way to grab the reader's attention. Um, again, who wants to show off? Um, these ways of grabbing a reader's attention, I call them hooks. Um, sometimes you learn about them in high school. Yes, all this happens in one paragraph. And the good news, Toby, is I'm going to show you an example of a paragraph that I wrote in just a second. Uh, but who wants to show off and can remember some of those tricks, those techniques, those hooks for how to grab a reader's attention in the introduction? Anybody remember some of those? Of course, I have a slide that <laughs> gives the answers, but uh, I want to see if people kind of know about these techniques already. Uh, Tabitha says shock. Okay. Yeah, you can begin with some sort of su surprising move. Uh, Hesh says a corny joke. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that would be a great technique. <laughs> it would be a technique. I'm not sure. Uh, unless the corny joke somehow fits so perfectly well with your topic, I'm not sure that's a great technique. Uh, uh, Toby says, I thought I remember learning a thesis uh, beginning a closing paragraph. Yeah, it often gets repeated at the end. Uh, you know, you might have an instructor who teaches things differently, uh, especially there, there's this very, very specific kind of argument paper that wants to save the actual thesis or argument for the very end rather than beginning. But but classically, it's, it's, it's mentioned at the end of the introduction and then echoed at the end. Um, okay, people are coming up with good answers. Uh, uh, Tavis says, says, telling a story. Yes, good. Beginning with a story. Uh, someone else said something good. Uh, start with a quote. Okay, yeah, there's another good one. Um, anyway, here's the list. Yeah, begin with an example or anecdote, researched or personal. Okay, so you can begin with a personal example or personal anecdote, which is just a very, very short story. Um, or if it's not personal, it can be grabbed from the headlines. Okay, maybe there's something going on in the news that relates perfectly to your topic. So if you're writing about, I don't know, the low royalty rates paid out by streaming music services, that's, if that's your topic, uh, you know, Taylor Swift was in the news a couple months ago for pulling her music from Spotify. That might be a clever way to begin your paper, right? So we can begin with an example or an anecdote. We can begin with a thoughtful question. Uh, we can begin with a quotation. We can begin with a dramatic or descriptive hypothetical scene. This is kind of similar to the first one, whereas the first one is an actual example or anecdote. Uh, this one is hypothetical. It's sort of an imagine this kind of scenario uh, where the scenario is so richly realized that it feels real. Or as someone else mentioned, we can begin with an insightful or surprising uh, big picture fact. Okay. Um, by the way, all these really are great techniques, but they become lousy techniques if they're just used generically. For example, beginning with a thoughtful question could be a terrific way to begin an essay, but not if it's just a generic question, right? I mean, the essay that begins, you know, what is love <laughs> or what is music, right? It questions that you're not really interested in, in asking and you're not interested in your readers truly considering. That's just you filling up space. Um, same thing with using a quotation, um, a terrific useful quotation that you truly use as a way to transition into your topic can be powerful, but just dropping in a quotation out of nowhere isn't very powerful. Uh, Page says, so hook pretty much brings in a reader, correct? Yes. And let's look at an example. So if we go into the discussion board activity, this is where you're going to post your um, introduction paragraph. By the way, here is the assignment sheet for the discussion. And it gives all the specific details about when it's due. Um, 
on the right side of page one, you get the four specific things you need to post. For example, your introduction paragraph. Um, then there are some other things I want you to answer, like uh, what are your two reasons for choosing the topic? What can your audience realistically do about the issue? Um, and what questions do you have for your classmates? Uh, but, and I, I'm, I swear I'm not being mean or cynical, but because sometimes people forget to read through the assignment sheet, I have modeled exactly what you need to do on the discussion board. And we need to go in there. Okay, so it's this activity here, 1.4, online discussion, exploring your appeal. And if you go into the discussion board, you'll see that I've already posted something. I have modeled basically what you need to do for this assignment. Okay, so for this one, because I'm an English teacher and for me to write about an issue that relates to education or English would be boring, I'm going to pretend that I'm a full sale student studying game design. Okay, so I chose a video game issue and I wrote an introduction paragraph and let's take a look at it. And by the way, when I'm reading this, see if you can determine which hook, which technique I used. This reads, in March 2013, Game development company Crystal Dynamics released Tomb Raider, a reboot of the long-standing popular video game series. There were significant changes to the game, shifting away from the block-pulling, block-pushing, puzzle-solving format that had changed little since the original Tomb Raider appeared in 1996. There were new controls and an emphasis on an open-world environment. But perhaps the biggest change came for the game's protagonist herself, Lara Croft. Gone were the short shorts and skimpy tops. Gone was Lara's unrealistic figure, small-waisted and big-chested. Instead, a new Lara appeared, one whose character design was less an adolescent boy's comic book dream and more a realistic portrayal of how a real young woman might actually look. And here comes my thesis. Though video game companies like Crystal Dynamics have made strides in presenting strong, non-sexualized images of women, these companies need to be pressured to do more. Gamers need to write to game publishers and game magazines and let their voices be heard. Um, okay. Um, and notice I could have made the audience something different. I could have not targeted gamers, but maybe the game developers themselves. But again, that would affect my message and that would possibly affect the way I go about writing my paper. I've determined that gamers are the audience I really want to target. Okay. So that's something you'll have to figure out as well, who you're trying to target and what your message is. Um, by the way, what technique am I using here? Which hook, which trick, which move am I using? I'm hoping it's obvious. Do I need to go back to the slide to remind people of the choices? No, I'm not looking for the fancy Greek words like ethos, pathos, those, those opening moves that you make in an introduction. Okay, this stuff. Uh, it's this one. Begin with an example. Okay. Right. Um, by the way, anybody play the Tomb Raider game? <laughs> it was it was really it was really terrific. <laughs> but I did notice when I was playing it, I was like, wow, this game finally changed. I mean, I'm a fan of the series. I've played every game in the series. Uh, but, you know, I always thought it was weird the way that the main character was was uh, portrayed on the screen. Like, I think it's weird in general when you watch movies or something that are a little bit too intensely over the top um, in objectifying people. But, you know, it's a video game. Like, I, I don't really need to stare at uh, – it's just very awkward is what I'm saying. So, yeah, when the new game, the reboot, appeared in 2013, it was like, oh, okay, nice. Finally, the company is making changes. Uh, and oh, something else I should mention. Some of you already might be thinking, well – didn't you say earlier that this shouldn't be based in personal opinion? How is this not your personal opinion? I mean, yes, it is something that I noticed, but it's not a completely invented issue. It's not me just responding to the game with something that's so uniquely particular to me that no one else could agree with it. A lot has been written about this issue. And if you're, in ga if you're into gaming, you, it, it, made, it made headlines a couple months ago, the whole Gamergate controversy, right, with women speaking out about these issues and getting shouted down by male gamers. Like it was in the headlines. So it's, it's not my invented issue. It's not just my personal opinion. Um, but it is a good example of a social issue um, that's rooted enough in reality, meaning I can do research on it, um, that it will work well for this assignment. Okay.
Uh, and notice I covered the other things too. So I explained two reasons why I chose this topic. I'm interested in the social ramifications of gaming. That gaming is much more than what happens on the screen. Um, that gaming, like other media forms, shape our impression of the world. Uh, I talk a bit about what my audience can do about it. And I ask questions for my fellow classmates. Uh, by the way, when you post your introduction paragraph and your responses to these topics, your questions should probably, well, not probably, they should be more writing focused. Like, you know, uh, it should relate to your topic, your thesis, um, because, you know, this is a pretty typical discussion. So by Sunday night, you need to not only post your work, but you need to respond to at least two other people's posts. Um, and when you respond to other people's posts, um, you two should be focusing on like the paragraph, the actual words on the page. Like, is the topic working? Is it meeting the requirements of a PSA topic? Um, is the thesis reasonable? Is there a clear message and audience in place? Okay, these are the most important things to focus on. Because what happens is students get so caught up in the topic uh, that they don't really talk about anything else. So a student might respond to my post and say, oh man, yeah, Tomb Raider was an awesome game and I loved it and I loved all the changes. And they never talk about the paragraph or they never talk about how the paragraph could be improved or how the message could be improved. Okay, that's our main goal. If you want to make a couple comments about the topic as an icebreaker, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But the main goal is to give each other good, solid advice on what they've actually produced. Okay. Uh, Paige says, how long are the meetings? We're, we're about done. I, I keep them to an hour because if I go too much over an hour, I, I lose you guys. Uh, so we're wrapping things up. And we know we're wrapping things up because here's the final quiz question. Identify specifically your intended audience for your appeal to action. Okay. So your audience is not everybody. Um, your audience isn't three or four different categories because every so often people say, oh, this PSA, it's going to try to reach, uh, you know, gamers, game publishers, CEOs of gaming companies, parents, teens. It's like, no, 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 you should probably not probably you should have one core audience that you're really trying to reach. So for me, it's gamers. OK, it could have been a completely different audience. I could have a video game topic where, yeah, maybe it's it's designed to reach parents. OK, but that would mean that my paper would be much it would be much different. Uh, Desiree says, can you get the first question again? Yeah, I'll go back to the questions in just a second. Oh, that was the end of the session. <laughs> OK, uh, Paige says, can it be two people such as mobile developers and smartphone users? Uh, probably not, unless you can make the case for me in your quiz why it would be both. Because if it's an issue, like let's say you're dealing, dealing with the security risks. If you're speaking to developers, it would probably be a message that encourages them to, I don't know, uh, release apps that have fewer security risks, right? It would be something that they can do on their end. Whereas users, it would be a much different message. Um, like you might have a specific action you want uh, smartphone users to do. Uh, Hesh says, can we get help from the writing center? Absolutely. Uh, if you go to Full Sail Connect, I should bookmark it because I'm always typing it into my search function. But if you go to Full Sail Connect, you all know how to get there, right? Um, I'm not going to go all the way there. But as soon as you're into Full Sail Connect, right, this this thing, uh, you can just do a search for the writing center. And the, it has their phone number. And I think you get like a, a GPS point for for your first writing center visit. So, yeah, please take advantage of that. Uh, while I go back to the first quiz question for Desiree, other questions that people have about PSAs or about topics or about anything that's confusing. I know we covered a lot in this session and I know I'm asking for a lot, but um, really, if we if we do this sort of hard work for week one and week two, um, it makes the second half of the month much, much easier. Uh, Paige says it's a bit confusing. Yeah, Paige, if you continue to have questions, send me a message, okay? Or I don't know, are you an online student or are you a campus student? Campus students can always visit me. <laughs> You're online. Okay, then, yeah, you can send me a message. Um, we can talk more. Again, don't make it more difficult than it is. Find an issue, identify a single audience, and target a specific audience with a message, okay? And m the message doesn't even have to be some grand solution. Okay, my 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 message to gamers was very modest. You know, make your voices heard. Write to game write to game uh, magazines and make your voices heard. Uh, that's it. 
Toby says, what is the best way to contact you? The, the, be the easiest way is, is just to send me a message through the envelope icon at the top of your FSO page. If you, if you're, if you like more personal contact, I have a phone number uh, that's included in the welcome message that I sent out Monday morning. Um, so you can always just give me a call in my office. Uh, that's always fun. And if you're on campus, you can always drop by and visit me. Yeah, it's nice down here in Orlando, although it's getting hot. We were, we already hit like the nineties for the past couple of weeks and it's, it's kind of been miserable. Uh, uh, Juan, if you're on campus, I'm in building 4D. I'm going to put that in the chat. Okay, I'm, I'm basically there every morning from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, you should give me a heads up on when you think you might stop by just to make so I can make sure I haven't wandered away from my desk or that it doesn't conflict with a meeting or something like that. But yeah, that's where I'm located. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because people who watch this session probably don't want to hear this kind of minutia, but I'm going to hang out and continue to answer questions for people who have them.